Welcome back to the green yard, more specifically the front yard of the green yard. We've done a video over here already this spring on our uh, Royal Empress tree, this Polonia tree. Um, had some beautiful flowers. This is actually our white Polonia tree since the other one, this one had more of a white uh, flowering to it and then the other one had more of those purple flowers on it uh, over on the other side. Um, but we're here today in the middle of April. It's actually the 15th today. Happy tax day to all of you. Uh, but we're here today for the tree behind me, which is this Pakistan mulberry. Um, I did a short on our Pakistan mulberry showcasing that this year, yes, we finally got some fruit. Um, it has actually been in the ground since uh, winter of 2020, so um, about three, a little over, uh, just under three and a half years it's been in the ground. Uh, it was about a foot tall when we first got it and put it in the ground, and it is now uh, this monster. I actually did uh, a big trim on it this last fall, uh, which I included a little video on that too. Big trim on it and uh, brought it back down to a little bit more manageable of a size. Remember our mulberry trees do really, really, really well here in the Phoenix area. Uh, the king of the fruit trees is kind of their nickname because they not only produce heavily here, but they also do very, very well with very little uh, need for any sort of amendments or anything like that. For me, I do some amendments, so we're gonna talk about that here in a minute. And we're also going to try our first Pakistan mulberries off of this tree as well. Here we go. Kind of crazy uh, you can see here this is the branch from last year right here and all of this growth already this two and a half feet uh, is all from I would say uh, late or I'm sorry beginning of March so about a month and a half and it's already growing that much just a testament to how much these mulberry trees grow here in the Phoenix area like I said before, this one is almost three and a half years old. Um, it ended up forming into kind of this multi trunk down here, um, which I'm okay with. They're not, uh, this one's not, wasn't grafted. So this one was actually from a, um, a uh, tissue culture, uh, which is part of the reason it took three and a half years to fruit. Um, we don't have any other ones here in the green yard, any other mulberry trees, um, but I do have a Pakistan mulberry um, that I helped put in the ground at a local school, and that one is, uh, it fruited the first year, and that one was grafted. So if you get a grafted tree, it fruits a lot faster than these tissue cultures, which take a long time. <laughs> A um, little disappointed actually it took so long, but I'm very happy that we do have these mulberries, which speaking of these mulberries, you can see them here just kind of hanging. Um, remember Pakistan mulberries in particular are bigger, although this first year and the first couple years that they produce, they aren't as big as you would hope they would be um, with that production. So we definitely hope that they would end up being a little bit bigger. Here's another one of those mulberries as well on there. So really amazing that this tree is finally, finally producing. It's a good size, which means that we're probably gonna get a lot of mulberries off of here very quickly. In terms of my amendments and what I do with this tree is I do add in agricultural sulfur you can actually see some on here. I just did a sulfur video and released a sulfur video as well. We're lowering the soil pH. Um, these mulberry trees don't actually need that. Um, I found that it's helped. I think that part of the reason I'm getting this explosive growth is from it, but you don't need it. Um, they grow fine with or without um, that soil amendment. They can take our higher pH and do just fine. 
I also do fish emulsion once a month. That is something I would recommend. Um, you know, we want our fruit trees to feed us and in order for them to feed us, we have to feed them. So it's important to do that and to get that food to them. Speaking of that food, you can see here we have two mulberries that are ripe super exciting um, we're actually going to pick this guy off the left for our taste test today see there's a couple other mulberries around around it as well which is really exciting uh, this one up here actually is more characteristic of those pakistan mulberries with that kind of longer profile on it the other thing that i do um, with our pakistan mulberry is um, my watering schedule is, I keep it on the same schedule as everybody else. We are on flood irrigation here in the green yard. So it does get that flood irrigation every two weeks. Probably part of its success as well. I do not supplemental water besides that flood irrigation every two weeks, except in the winter when it gets watered once a month. On the other side of our mulberry tree, we do have our tropical food forest with all of our tropical trees. So it does kind of act as this additional shade for uh, our tropical trees, like our jackfruit tree there. You can see our um, a little bit of our African tulip tree. Got our carry mango, our koi fish pond, our falan mango, as well as our java kaba and our loquat there kind of in the corner. So um, this, this mulberry tree is almost an extension now of that food forest and maybe someday it will provide enough shade in the spot that I'm standing in where we can actually plant some additional uh, tropical fruit trees in this front yard area as well. All right, so that moment we've kind of all been waiting for, uh, we have that Pakistan mulberry. This is on the smaller side actually, even the one at the that I helped plant at our local school uh, was bigger than this the first year, um, but it looks pretty juicy. Could have been on the tree probably for another day, but I like to try to pick them before the birds get them because the birds do love our mulberries. Uh, remember, Pakistan mulberry is not the only variety. There are actually a lot of varieties of our mulberry trees uh, that do very well here. I know Everbearing, uh, there's a dwarf mulberry, and I'll, the list goes on. I'll include some of the names here uh, when I look them up. I'm thinking about adding an additional mulberry just because I do love these mulberries so, so much. They're really, really good. Um, I like to relate them to kind of like a, they taste kind of like a sweet blackberry. Um, they do not keep for very long though. Actually, just from me touching it, it's already starting to break apart a little bit. So let's go ahead and let's taste this guy. Nope. That's what those Pakistan mulberries taste like. Very, very much on the sweet side, way sweeter than like a blackberry is. Um, kind of has same texture, a little bit of the same taste as our blackberries, but way, way sweeter. I actually, I absolutely love our Pakistan mulberries. Um, anytime I can get to that school and eat some, uh, they're, they're really amazing. And then of course here as well, now that we have them and our tree is finally producing, definitely getting some Pakistan mulberries too, which I'm very, very excited about. Um, hopefully this tree continues to produce moving forward and just uh, we are gonna continue this abundance that we have going on this year. I kind of think that 2024 for us here in the green yard is gonna be the year of abundance with all of our fruiting and flowering trees. We got our mulberry, we have our papayas. Uh, I've already done a few things on our Asian pears and our pink lady apples. Uh, we're, it looks like we're gonna get some additional mangoes as well. So stay tuned for some awesome harvesting videos just like this one. And as always, if you like what you saw, make sure you like and subscribe. If you wanna reach out or you have any questions, make sure you comment below or reach out to us through our social media. And as always, live green, plant lots, and of course have fun. We'll see you next time.